please stand if you're able and join with me in responsibly reading the call to worship as printed in your bulletin. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart and return to the Lord your God. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love. Consecrate a fast, call a sacred assembly, sanctify the congregation, let the priests who minister to the Lord weep and say, Spare your people, O Lord. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. We hunger and thirst for God. Draw near to walk this journey of faith. We repent and call on the name of the Lord our God. We rejoice in his salvation. Come, let us worship the Lord.
Please remain standing and let us once again affirm our faith by reciting together the Apostles' Creed as printed in your bulletin. Our scripture today is from the 51st Psalm, verses 1 through 12. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb you taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Heavenly Father, we give you our thanks and praise for all of your blessings to us each day. Lord, we give you these gifts to be used in bringing others to know you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to make an announcement to you now, and I'm going to try to remember to announce it again later on in the service. But I want to correct the hymn number that's the last hymn, not the next one we'll sing after the sermon, but the last hymn in the service. Number 663 is the correct number for that hymn title. I'm going to try to remember to announce that again later, but in case I don't, you've heard about it now, okay? So help me out here and see if you can remember that, and I'm going to try to do the same kind of feels like some normalcy is returning, doesn't it? With the children coming up front for the children's moment and passing the plates through the pews again and the nurture committee offering the food out there between the services and the welcome center. Doesn't it feel like normal? Sort of creeping back in. Um, it kind of feels good. I like that. I'm excited about that. Over the next couple of Sundays as we're leaning into Lent, we're going to be talking about remembering. Remembering. Remembering can be a wonderful thing. This past couple of days, I had opportunity to spend time in the house where I grew up. Memories somehow in the houses where we grow up just get in the walls. They're just there. Any time we go in there, here they come again. Particularly if we have a quiet moment, we can't escape them. They're just everywhere. I have some wonderful memories that are in those walls. Memories of times with family, Christmases, birthdays shared there. Remembering my friends coming over to hang out, Clint and Sammy and Doug and, and, and Bruce. Just wonderful, wonderful times we had there. But you have those memories too, don't you? But there are also memories that I have of my growing up years that are not so good, that are painful. Sometimes pain of my own creation of bad decisions that I made. We were camping one time in the woods back behind the house where I grew up. There used to be miles of woods back there, not so much anymore, but back in the day, there were just woods that went on forever. We were camping back there, and another set of our friends was camping not horribly far away. Same night, we just both wound up in different camping areas out in the same patch of woods. Well, that camping experience, and I don't remember how this got started. I'm sure it was somebody that was not me. But that what happened was the camping experience turned into an egg fight. You know where you take the raw eggs and you chuck them at one another? Well, that egg fight between these two camps spilled out of the woods and over into our neighborhood. If you're going to do that, don't do it in your own neighborhood, folks. Well, that turned into about two in the morning, some neighbors getting pretty tired of that, calling the police, which turned into the police coming, which turned into us being loaded in the back of several squad cars and delivered back to each of our homes at two in the morning. And that turned into some conversations you really didn't want to be part of. Pain can be a wonderful teacher. But we all have these memories, don't we? Good and bad. Remembering can be good. Even the hard things, it's good to hang on to those memories. The trick to those memories is what we do with them and handling those memories well. This guy was in the hospital after battling an illness and it still wasn't resolved yet, but... He's in and out of consciousness and wakes up and sees his friend Bob right there faithfully beside him in the hospital. And he mustered enough consciousness to say to his friend Bob, he said, you know, Bob, every time I've hit hard moments in my life, we've been friends for years, every time I've hit 
the valleys, you've been right there. When I lost my job, you were there. When my income fell away to nothing, you were there. When I lost my house because my job and my income were gone, you were there. And now here I am in the hospital facing this hard time, and Bob, there you are. Bob, I'm beginning to think you're bad luck. <laughs> what we do with our memories is key. How do we handle the memories, even the bad stuff? Here's what I think we Christian types do with our memories, particularly the hard ones. We easily look at the great times where the lions are falling to us in pleasant places. We look at those as God's blessing. Man, God is with us. Everything is good. But when things turn hard and we have those memories, particularly when there are hard times due to our folly, then we often wonder where God is. We mistakenly think because we look back on those memories and they're painful for us that that must be a sign of God's disfavor, that God clearly has not forgiven us for those things yet or else I wouldn't look back on them and feel this pain. Or better yet, if I could just find the delete button in my memory to make those memories go away. If God has really forgiven me, shouldn't I be able to forget those things? God has forgotten them. That's what they always tell me. So why can't I? If I can't forget them, doesn't it then stand to reason that God hasn't either? And God is holding me still responsible, still guilty, still punishable for this memory that I just can't shake. That's what we do with it. Here's why I think God allows those painful memories to remain is so we won't go back there again. That's, that's one of the things. Pain is a great teacher. God allows the pain of the memories to remain even though He has long forgiven us for those things so that we won't go there again, so that we will stay in stronger places where there is less harm and more joy and more life for us. That's why God allows those memories to remain. The pain of it, don't, don't mistake that for the absence of God's forgiveness in your life. That's part of God's grace in your life. Those of you who keep up with basketball know that Duke's basketball coach, Mike Krzyzewski, is retiring after 42 years. Did pretty good during his years at Duke. They played Carolina in Cameron for Coach K's last regular season game. And last game in Cameron against Carolina yesterday, I am so glad that Duke won that ball game. <laughs> Allow me my illusion, folks. Just work with me here, okay? The story is told of Coach K during his early years at Duke. His first year at Duke and my first year at Duke were one and the same. He probably wouldn't remember that if you asked him, but yet yeah, that is true. Had some pretty lean years in his early years there at Duke. In one of them, Duke had played Virginia in the ACC tournament. Lost gloriously. Lost by some 40 some odd points to the University of Virginia. After the game was over, the Duke coaching staff went to a restaurant to eat together and commiserate over the whooping they had just taken at the hand of the Cavaliers. So they're gathered around the table at the restaurant, and as the story goes, one of the assistant coaches at Duke raised his glass and said, here's to forgetting tonight. Coach K offered a rebuttal. He raised his glass and said, Oh no, here's to never forgetting tonight. 
It's the memory of what helped them to lose. But I'm convinced it's part of what drove him to win more games than any other college coach in Division I ever has. Because he never forgot. And so it is with God's work in us. We remember the, the, these things that are hurtful to us and painful to us and we mistakenly think because we remember them, we just can't shake them. It's because God is still mad at us so that He just got this long memory and God just can't let it go and He's still holding me accountable for that. No, that's not it at all. God has forgiven you for it through the blood of Jesus Christ, but He allows you to remember so that you'll never forget. So that you might not go back there again. Today's scripture we find David, and this is one of the psalms that is attributed to David. He thinks back on those times where he just really messed it up, or he just stepped in it big time, and, and he just can't shake it, and the memories of those things cause him great pain. He said, my sin is ever before me. No matter which direction I look, I can't get it out of my mind. There it is. I, it's over here. and I look over there and, it's, and it just jumps in front of my sight over here as well. My sin is always in front of me. Is he thinking about his misdeeds with Bathsheba? Maybe, I don't know. Is he remembering some of the missteps he took as a father? And he was, you know, his relationships with his sons just wasn't that great. Was it that? I don't know. Clearly it was something. My sin is ever before me. I can't not remember it. I can't unsee it. So then he makes a request of God. You do the cleaning of me, Lord. I can't fix this. I can't make this right on my own. You clean me up, Lord, as only you can. And then I'll be white as snow. But in the meantime, Lord, don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Don't remove your presence from me. Don't turn your face from me, even though I rightly deserve it, Lord, be merciful to me. Here's what this does for us. That, that, that should be our heart as well. That's one of the reasons that, that God allows these memories to remain. It's the same in us as it was in David. David knew the only way he could get past this stuff was through the mercy of God. Through the forgiveness of God. That should be the posture of our heart as well when the memories pain us of our misdeeds where we haven't been all we should have been by now. Lord, forgive me. It keeps us tied to the cross. Handling our memories of our painful stuff well can not only help us not go back there again, it can keep us tied to the cross. Here's the thing. You hear this on the radio and television. You don't look, have to look far in the Christian church to hear this being touted. That somehow Jesus gets us started in our walk towards God. But after we've been to the cross, after we've been saved, then we, it's kind of up to us to keep our salvation then. We've got to live right and do it right. We're supposed to have zero defects after we've been to the cross. Well, that's just not the scriptural witness at all. Yes, we do the best we can, but folks, we are always sinners in need of forgiving even after we've been saved, even after we've been to the cross. We are sinners in need of God's forgiveness, no less after than before. We are perpetually in need of the forgiveness of God. God gives us the gift of seeing where we have messed it up and it being painful to us to keep us tied to His mercy so that now and again we come back around and we offer the prayer, Lord, 
My sin, I see it. But in the face of it, Lord, don't remove yourself from me. You cleanse me, Lord. And on then and only then will I be white as snow. Will I be right in your presence because of your work in me, not because I can make it that way on my own. Lord, you clean me up. You do the forgiving. That should be our prayer. Seeing that we're not all we should be by now keeps us running back to the cross. Here's the thing. I was first saved when I was a senior in high school, 17 years of age, when I accepted Jesus Christ for the first time. I'm going to tell you a secret. You haven't figured this out after these six and a half years I've been with you, but I'm going to tell you. Don't tell anybody else. This is just between us, okay? But I'm still a sinner. You're shocked, I know. But I'm still a sinner in need of God's saving through Jesus. I need God's salvation as much right now as I stand before you in this moment, as I did 15 minutes before I was saved for the first time. It's those moments when I remember when it comes back round again that I see that I'm not all I should be, that I need, that drives me back to the cross when I handle my memories well. Back to where the forgiveness is. That should be the posture of our hearts. That's the gift of remembering that God allows us to have even in the memories of our hardest things. of The things that pain us most. We're going to be talking about remembering over the next couple of Sundays. But for that now, that's enough to get us started. But for this moment, all of God's people who remember and who in that remembering, even though it may be hard, are reminded of their need for the forgiveness God offers through Jesus Christ. Said amen. amen. our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, 
and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your law. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us with joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayer. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, Lord, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Will those who are assisting Patricia and I with communion please come forward at this time? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. And all God's people together said, Amen. And amen. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. And all God's people together said, Amen. There are songs in just a moment we, we invite you forward that we'll invite you to sing as your sisters and brothers are coming forward to commune. When the time comes in just a moment, we'll allow the choir to come and commune first, and then the ushers will direct you is when you can come forward and commune. Let's come up the center aisles and go back by the side aisles to our seats. The body of Christ broken for you.
Thanks be to God. The blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Tell the body of Christ broken for you. We'll let the choir commune first, and then the ushers will direct you as to when you may come. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The hymn number we're going to sing is number 663. One verse only of Savior again to thy name. Let's stand as we sing. In the strength of the Holy Spirit, may we truly give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.